earlier this week, I did a video on five ways you can use Samsung DeX. The thing that struck me when I made the video was that Samsung DeX has limits, but it shouldn't. Daniel here from Sam Mobile TV. Today, we're going to explore the limitations of DeX and figure out why they exist. When I made the video earlier in the week, I started to think about why Samsung DeX can do these amazing things, but then fall short in others. Because as a productivity tool, it can really give you this sense of being productive from not needing a lot. But sometimes you get to a limit with it where you realize you actually need more equipment to get the job done. So let's look at the strengths of Samsung DeX before we evaluate where the weaknesses lie. The thing that I really like about it is that everything is on your phone. You don't need to be juggling hard drives and different things because everything you need sits and lies on your smartphone. What else is great too is that Samsung DeX can operate as both a productivity hub and an entertainment service. Because of the fact you can cast it to TVs wirelessly, it gives you the flexibility to use it for entertainment and also productivity at the same time. Basically, you can turn any display into a computer screen, and that can be either via HDMI or, or wirelessly, because even if it's not a compatible wireless monitor and display, you can connect it up via a cable and still get Samsung DeX launched on it. Apps can be resized, things get launched, into desktop versions, particularly websites. You know, if you're someone who uses Canva, Canva is a, a cloud-based online service. You can launch the website of Canva into desktop. YouTube launches a desktop. Twitter or X launches in that full desktop version when you're in the browser inside Samsung DeX. Basically, Samsung DeX just takes advantage of the computational performance of your phone. The fact that Samsung phones have 12 gig of RAM, and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 8 Gen 3 for Galaxies, the computing power is so high, and Samsung DeX can sort of bring that to life in a way that no other smartphone is really capable of doing. So there's some really high level strengths. The thing is though, it's not all roses and butterflies. Samsung DeX has some weaknesses. The thing I've found is it's not always the convenient choice, particularly when you're out and about, because DeX, whilst it is portable and you can plug it in basically anywhere, if you want to do work at a cafe, or if you want to do work at the airport, you need to have your own peripherals with you anyway. So you might need a portable monitor. You might need a laptop that you can plug your phone into. So you still need a peripheral to take around with you, even though everything is still on your phone. The thing is though, that is fine. You can kind of work around that, but the apps are something you can't really get around, particularly if you need them. A lot of the times, the apps that a lot of people use day to day, like the Office Suite, for example, is still mobile versions of the app. So you launch it, you still have all the limitations of the mobile app that you would if the phone wasn't in DeX mode. Full version of Microsoft Word is plentiful with features, as is PowerPoint. But you'll find in the mobile version, they are limiting in what you can actually do with them. Also, video editing apps, uh, as an example, don't end up being optimized for keyboard and mouse input. They end up being optimized for touch. And then when you launch them in DeX, that same sort of touch interaction applies and they don't really work nicely or cohesively with the keyboard and a mouse. Mouse in particular, you definitely run into some frustrations. The thing is, why do these limitations exist? And why are these weaknesses still a thing, even though DeX has been around since 2017? Whose fault really is it? Is it Samsung's? In a way, yes, but mostly no. Samsung have built the DeX platform to be powerful and be all-encompassing, and it is an open platform too, so it's not as if it's being hidden or limited away from developers. Samsung still have the platform that they've built, and people know about it. So is it app developers' fault? Yes and no. App developers build apps and services to cater for the mass market audiences. They respond to what's popular and meet the demand of users. So then is it the user's fault? Again, Mostly no, but a little bit yes. The thing is, the app developer and the usage kind of go hand in hand. If people use Samsung DeX more, like more universally, not to say it's not popular, it just has a bit of a niche audience versus a wider application, then app developers would be more inclined to build for those users. But users, to get something more broadly applied, you need to have the thing available at that broad level. So apps not working in desktop mode mean that potentially the users might turn away from it. Then the app developers aren't going to develop because they're not using it. So it's like a catch-22, which one do you do first? It's hard to blame the end user because effectively they're the ones who pay money. They have the right to use the thing any way they want. We shouldn't tell them how to use it. They have the right to choose that for themselves. So the answer is probably a little bit more complex than just it's someone's fault. 
there's probably a combination of all three being partly to blame because they're all ones that kind of have the stake in it. Samsung, for me, could do more to drive decks. It's an amazing platform and it's got all of these great foundations, but I feel like they're just kind of sitting on it instead of innovating it and driving it into the industry. Because if Samsung wanted to, they could make DeX a true Windows OS competitor where you can do everything from the one device. The hardware is certainly capable. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy this year has demonstrated that absolutely. Samsung potentially could try and incentivize developers if they aren't already to bring more optimized apps into the platform. But then app developers could also be a little bit more proactive in developing for Samsung DeX to try and bring those end users in. And then users could potentially be a little bit more creative in navigating around the limitations of Samsung DeX to sort of use it more widely and more broadly. But it shouldn't really have to come to that. It's not up to the person paying the money to make it work. It should be coming from the people that accept the money. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Samsung DeX can offer so much. As I said, it's got the foundations built across the eight years that it's been around. But what does it need to go to that next level? Where should Samsung be heading with Samsung DeX to take it into an OS that can compete with Windows and Mac OS? You let us know down below. Thanks for watching Sam Mobile TV. Hit that subscribe button. Come and find us everywhere on all our social channels. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.